Well, hello. I can't see you very well, but uh, but uh, since this is a meeting of startups, I thought I'd talk about uh, the startup country. Basically, uh, how Estonia emerged from the uh, morass of what was the <coughs> the dregs of the Soviet Union has much to do with uh, very clever use of technology. And, um, well, I thought I'd talk about how that all happened and what we have done, uh, and especially because uh, since the 6th of June, all kinds of people are worried about what an overly technological society means, and I perhaps would like at the end to d try to dispel some of the uh, rather uh, strange myths that have created. But basically, what can I say? I mean, we, uh, we live in a society today where we cannot even imagine to live the way we lived 25 years ago. There were people didn't, people had fixed line phones, very few people had PCs. Um, I had one since 1983, but in 1991, I still knew very few people had PCs. There were no there were no iPhones or smartphones, there were no iPads. Uh, society was not at all, or people were not at all connected. Today, not only are people all connected, but our societies are connected. We have supervisory control and data acquisition systems, or SCADA systems, controlling everything from our traffic lights to the food we buy in our supermarket. The question is, uh, how how do, we, how do we deal with all of this? Now, in the case of Estonia, we decided that uh, we would try to make as much use of all of this modern technology as possible to leapfrog all of the, all of the legacy technology that existed uh, in what was, called, which was considered modernized Europe or mo the modernized West. And today, so we have gotten to a point where 25% uh, of our population votes online anywhere in the world if they want. Uh, 97, 98 percent of prescriptions are filled online. Bank transfers are all done online. Taxes are all done online. Companies can be registered in 15 minutes. And all of this has uh, allowed a country which had a very low GDP per capita some uh, 20 years ago to move on and become one of the, if not the most, wired countries in the world. Now, this is, um, uh, this is very nice for my country, but today when we keep reading about all of these things that come out about, um, about the NSA following tech people's technology, uh, when we see that uh, supposedly we, everything we do is being registered somewhere, uh, I see a major threat to the idea of a completely computerized society. Unfortunately, a lot of what we see, what we see today is, uh, is actually based on uh, non-information, uh, which leads to perhaps the issues that we should be confronting today when we talk about the computerization of society, the internetization, the use of data everywhere, uh, which is that Unless you get the architecture uh, and the technology right, um, we're not going to be able to proceed much further than we have today in the world. And we need to really pay much more attention to how we, how we structure our, our Internet and societies. And the key to, to this has to do with a few core issues that I don't think have been addressed enough. One of them is a secure and authenticatable identity. We all know the old slogan on the internet, no one knows if you're a dog. Well, in fact, this is very serious. If you want to have internet security, you really have to know that whoever is contacting you is you, whoever is accessing your data is someone who is you and not someone else who is using your identity. You want to make sure that um, that whoever leaves a trail of following you, doing something to you, you know who they are. So identity is a crucial aspect of any future 
Internet of Society. And this will be a problem in a number of countries because many countries, for historical, cultural, whatever reasons, don't want to have secure identities. Uh, I would say the English-speaking peoples that Churchill wrote about, uh, uh, the UK, Ireland, US, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia, unless they get around their hang-ups about, about identity and secure identity, will, not, will be left behind. In Europe, it's a little better, but in any case, we, that's one issue we need to deal with very much in the future. Uh, when it comes to computer security, we have to also understand that if we're going to proceed, um, and this is where NSA really becomes a big problem for us, is that in fact, uh, unless you end up trusting something like a government, you're not going to be able to go far. In fact, I would argue that what we need is a new social contract between governments and their citizens about how governments, uh, how governments behave, because we have to trust someone to be able to, to keep identity secure. If we don't do that, we're going to continue in a situation in which, uh, in which a bank will write off computer theft from its accounts uh, and call that a business loss if we don't have a social contract, we will end up in a situation in which we see sometimes where a, a power company that gets hacked says it's an act of God that did it or force majeure. All of these issues, of course, are completely avoidable and have to do with the kind of security system we allow to operate. And so I would argue that uh, either the bank or the power company, we're dealing with market failure, and there is no other way to deal with market failure than call on the government to do something. When I talked about these things up till six months ago, it was fairly people nodded their heads. Today, after what we see with the revelations that have come from Snowden, all of this becomes much more difficult. On the other hand, uh, I don't, I mean, this is, this is the dilemma that we're in. We, we know that uh, people probably have done some things that offend our sense of privacy. On the other hand, what is the alternative? And I, get, and I already said what the alternative was in the beginning of my talk, that we don't have smartphones, we don't have mobile phones, we don't use the internet. So we need to somehow come upon a new kind of social contractor. But what is accessible behavior? Uh, by governments what is, what is acceptable behavior, and we need to come up with rules on how to in, in guarantee and ensure identity. Now, what we have done in Estonia is precisely this, which is that we have created a very, very secure system, um, and this system is based on, uh, on an independently authentic authenticatable identity uh, which, uh, again, the government guarantees it's worthy, your identity, but the authentication of any ID is done based on uh, a private company that authenticates you. Uh, and this, once you have uh, this, you can proceed with sort of the fundamental core task of building up a society that is highly dependent on the use of the Internet. So the sine qua non is having having an identity. From there on, it beca architecture becomes important because uh, in the case of the architecture, you actually do need to have a distributed, uh, distributed system in which, uh, in which not everything is loaded into one place where you can hack into, but all of your data is spread all around. Again, these are sort of fundamental truths, but what it leads to then in the case of a country like mine is that um, uh, we, for all intents and purposes, have a national cloud. We don't call it a cloud, but it is a cloud, uh, where, in fact, the amount, of, uh, uh, where the amount of data is huge, but you never actually really have to deal much with it uh, because since it's already there, you never have to re-enter your data again. And more importantly, you have complete and utter control over your data, which leads to the a fundam another fundamental sine qua non for a future computerized society. And again, a very big step that most of the world has not taken 
is that you must own your own data. Legally be the owner of all your data. If you're not the owner of your data, then someone else is, and that prevents you from doing all kinds of things and allows other people to do all kinds of other things. Uh, and this is, I would argue, the, uh, a crucial step that needs to be taken in the European Union and elsewhere again, as well, that, that every citizen uh, must own the data that applies to him or her. Other people can have access to it, of course, legally if, uh, or with your permission, but you cannot have a situation in which your medical records belong to a hospital, not to you, uh, where your tax records belong to the government, not to you, and so on. Now, if we proceed in a society in which you own your own data and which your identity is guaranteed, you then end up with a situation in which you actually, the fundamentals of an e-society are in place. There are a couple of other things that need to be done. Since there's not, I don't have that much time, let me just get to the final issue that I wanted to raise here, which has to do with the NSA and what has come out of it. Where most of you should know that there are, or do know that there are three components to computer security. Uh, conveniently, uh, conveniently summarized as CIA, that is to say confidentiality, integrity, and accessibility. Everything almost that has come out of Snowden has to do with confidentiality. It bothers, it offends our sense of privacy that in fact that uh, someone has been snooping or at least knows with whom we potentially, or potentially knows with whom uh, our emails are interacting. They probably don't know what we're saying because deep packet inspections are costly uh, and any simple encryption device, right, the, even these days is not really worth anyone breaking. And if you're using RSA 2048, it'll be another 35 years before they crack that. The real issue that we need to pay far more attention to when it comes to security on the internet is not privacy. Privacy offends us if it's violated, but it has to do with integrity of data. And that is the... Today, where so much is online and where so much of our, our lives and everything related to us is somewhere in a database. All of you who, uh, who have a, an app in which you, down, you put in, such as I do, how quickly I swam two kilometers this morning. All that data is out there, um, all of the medical apps, all of the medical records that are about you, all of your financial records, they're all somewhere. And the real issue is data integrity, that those things are not changed. Um, and we have to pay, that's where we have to pay attention. We worry or talk about ad nauseam about the NSA knows something about me, I would worry about the NSA changing some of the data about me. We need to be looking at data integrity, and data integrity uh, it will be the, I predict, will be the, the issue of the future, be it in cyber war, cyber attacks. Think of it personally. Your blood type is somewhere listed if you have a if you have a medical, uh, if you have a knee health system like ours, and it says that you're RH positive, and someone changes your blood type to RH negative, and you go to the hospital and they look on the internet and says, oh, he's RH positive, and they give you RH positive blood, and you're RH negative, you're dead. So what we need to focus on now is that, and I would argue that for any future internet computerized society, we should, in fact, put most of our attention on data integrity. We are trying to, we are very close to solving these issues in Estonia, but my plea to all of you who are dealing, especially those of you who are startups, look at data integrity, worry less about privacy. Um, today in Estonia, we have, uh, we have a society in which, as I mentioned virtually, most of our, much of our lives takes place virtually. It has allowed a very small country uh, which is not very rich, to be in the big leagues, I would say, because you 
who, are, who have startups here are aiming for the same thing. Come visit us. You can see what a startup country looks like. It's a startup company writ large. And I do hope that you will come and see what it all looks like and what you can do in our country. You probably can't do it anywhere else in the world yet. But the world will move in that direction. And if you want to see, especially if you have uh, a startup that relies on a completely internet society, come and test it out with us. And we'll be happy to provide you whatever you need to do. My time is up. I could talk here for hours, but I won't. Thank you. Have a good day.